Hi guys, welcome back to GRS University. I'm Molly Licea, and today we are going to show you how to prep your work surface. Take your metal from this to this. Let's go. All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about metal prep. So whether it be a new piece that has factory um, blemishes on the surface, or it's a piece from a customer that has lots of sentimental value and has been worn and torn over the years from being used so much, you're going to want to prep your surface because you don't want to run the risk of somebody doing it afterwards and ruining your engraving. So today we're going to do a basic practice plate using information from Bruce Farman. This information can be found in our e-magazine Learn online. So go check that out and watch this video to see how to do that. All right, so we're using this lovely abused practice plate from the back, but this method applies to whatever piece that you may be working on, whether it be knives, guns, jewelry, what have you. You can use this basic process. So what we have is an arrangement of different grits of wet dry sandpaper. We have a little bit of WD-40, and then we have a nice lovely wooden block with some rubber glued onto the surface. So when you are sanding, you wanna keep your edges nice and crisp. If you use your hand, you run the risk of rounding the edges or creating different weird spots. So that's where the wood block comes in. The purpose of the rubber, which you could also use cork, according to Bruce Farman, is that it extends the life of your sandpaper. And it also helps to break down the grit a little bit because of that give, and it helps transition into the next grit nice and smoothly. So also when you're doing this, you're going to want to sand the whole piece. If you care about yourself and you care about your customer, then you're not going to want to have your lovely engraving sitting next to a haggard edge. So make sure that you prep the whole surface. What we're going to do is I have already pre-cut some strips. I'm gonna start with 220. That's because this isn't really scratched up too much. You may have a piece that's not as bad as this and you can start with a higher grit. You may have a piece that's worse than this and you might have to start with a file. We recommend not using a file unless you absolutely have to. We're starting with 220. We're just gonna wrap this around the block. And then I have my piece locked down into a vise. This just makes it easier to hold. I don't have my fingers in the way. We're gonna spray it with a little bit of WD-40. And I'm gonna start at a 45 degree angle. Okay, so as you can see, the WD-40 and the grit from the sandpaper and the metal kind of creates like this, not paste, but a residue that's hard to see if you've gotten all those scratches out. So in between, I'm just taking a shop paper towel and wiping that off to kind of look at it from different angles, make sure I've got those heavy scratches out. And then once I work through this, I'm gonna go up to the next grit, which will be a 320. This definitely takes quite a bit of time, but it's worth it. You want your engraving to be on a good surface. So once I finish going through this 220, we're gonna put the 320 on and we'll work at the opposite angle, a 92 this 45 right here. Okay, so now I'm switching over to my 320. And we're gonna rotate it. Okay. 
Okay, so the purpose of going the opposite angle when you switch between grits is that you can see some of these lines right here. That was from my 220 grit paper and we wanna keep going until all of those lines are gone. They should all go in one direction. Okay, so I'm done with the 320. I can't see any more scratches running the opposite way. So we're going to move up to the next grit, which is 400. So if you're gonna do rust bluing on a gun, this is where you would actually stop is after the 400. Um, for guns, it's usually good to stop around 600, depending on the surface that you want. If you have jewelry, you're gonna keep going if you want up to a mirror polish. But again, this is all personal taste, depending on the surface that you want to end up with on your piece. Just keep trucking guys. Rotate. Rust blooms for quitters. We're moving on to 600. Let's go. Rotate. <laughs> All right, so we just finished up with the 600. As long as you get to a polish that you and your customer are happy with, then you're good to go. You definitely wanna consider how much time is going to be put into this because it is time consuming when you're pricing your work for your customer. If you have any questions in addition to this regarding polishing, you can always call our Ask Master line and call Rex Peterson. He'll help you with those questions. Thanks for watching guys. As you noticed from this video, we are not above self-promotion. You got our Ask a Master feature. You got our e-magazine, Learn. So today, the suggested Instagram user is me, grs.molly. I post things sometimes. I'll do better. Go follow me. And if you wanna be our next suggested Instagram user, then tag us at GRS Tools and then like and subscribe to all of our stuff. You guys know the drill. We'll see you next time. Bye.